Thank you for taking the time to listen to our weekly service. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we ask that you pray and see what God would have you give. Now let's get to our sermon for today. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. This is not a normal Father's Day verse, but you'll see how it applies here in a minute. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thy hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go, and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. We can apply this verse to fathers as I try to challenge you today to be the best godly father you can be. It's never too late to start being the type of father you need to be. I started kind of late in life myself. I made a lot of stupid mistakes as a young father and I wish I could do it back over again and can't. I can only know that I can start today and like every day you get up it's the first day of the rest of your life and you can start being the father we need to be. And that's the, some of the lessons I've had to learn. I want you to, sh- I'm going to reread this verse again but I'm going to change it to understand how it applies to us today. Withhold not good from our families to whom it is due when it is in your power of thy hand to do it. Say not unto your families, Go and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it to give today. As fathers, we sometimes withhold doing things with our families. We want to take our children out. I don't know about you, i got all kinds of like things I would like to do with my kids. You know, fishing trips father-son luncheon or father-daughter luncheon and I've actually started doing that uh, just this year with my kids try to every couple maybe month take them out to, separately one at a time and just have a lunch with them just to, to be together we have all kinds of plans I know I do and I figure you're just like me these are things I want to do in the future I like to do this with my children I like to do that I got dreams on what I would like to do with them and all some things may never come true but there's a lot of things there we can accomplish but you know we get so busy with our work to make money to support our families that we forget what really is important is working making money important definitely we want it the best for our families but sometimes that unconsciously becomes so important that we actually forsake our children remember the song cats in the cradle you know I I read it to you last year or the year before for probably was for Father's Day I'm not gonna read it again but I can't help but think about that song all the time, especially on Father's Day, because it's exactly what happens. I mean, the guy that wrote this song, <laughs> God had inspired this guy. The father in the song had never had time for his son. Always working, always had something more important to do. And the son had a great attitude, says, Dad, oh yeah, I want to be like you, Dad, one day. I want, oh, we're going to have a great time one day, Dad, when we get together. Yes, son, we're going to have a great time when we get together. He meant to do the things he wanted to do with his son. But he never found the time, and it got away from him. Then one day, the father realizes that his son turned out just like him. His son goes to college, comes back. Come on, son, let's do something. Well, Dad, I, I want to borrow the car. You know, I want, to, uh, I want to go out with the guys. Okay, well, one day we'll, we'll have a good time to get. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a great time, Dad. And then later on, what happens? The son got married, had kids. Guess what? Now he's got responsibilities. And I think about my son. Uh, I watch him now. You know, he, he's a single dad. He, he's a great father, takes care of his daughter and all that. Uh, th- does a good job of everything. He works, trying to hopefully get in this promotion and everything eventually and, and, and his side job that he's doing. So he doesn't have a free minute. And yet, I think of sometimes, and I've told him this, I haven't said it to him in the last probably year, but uh, I want to just take him and me and go riding together. Do something, father and son. And, uh, and the only closest thing I can do is a luncheon. 
because he's always so busy. And, uh, and, uh, but yet I had my time when I was young. But you know what I was doing all that time? Working overtime. Working two jobs. The day, the time my son was born, I worked two full 40-hour week jobs while he, when he was born. Just to make ends meet. That wouldn't even to get ahead back then. And, uh, and there's a lot I regret that I wish I could do over. So uh, hopefully I'm a better grandfather with my grandkids. But time just keeps passing us by until one day it's all over. Then I, if I can get by saying this, <laughs> I told my wife I wasn't sure I was going to make this. In the last five or six years, before my dad died, I would leave the D.C. Uh, Rolling Thunder and go over and visit my parents. I was only 80 miles away, so I would go over there and spend a couple of days with them. Well, during that time, I always got my dad and say, come on, let's go ride in some place, not on the bike, uh, in the car. And uh, I say, let's, let's get in the car and go travel someplace. Where do you want to go? I just reminisce. Let's look at some of the old places we grew up and some of the places I think about once in a while and I forget where they are. And we got lost a couple times and we stopped for lunch and, and end up in places of Baltimore. We, uh, it's so much has changed and everything. But you know what? I had a great time with my dad and uh, and my dad was the type he loved Dunkin Donuts coffee I my brother would always tell me he said it takes an hour and 30 minutes to get to my brother's house from my mom's house and that's with no tra uh, normal traffic and there's two Dunkin Donuts on the way there and my dad stops at each one on the way there and comes back and stops at each one my dad if you opened up the refrigerator there was two to three cups of Dunkin' Donuts coffee in there at any one time. And I, when I went home during this time, I always took my laptop to study while I was there so I could preach when I come back. I would go get up 5 o'clock like I normally do, and I would go to Starbucks. And I would study there until about 9, 9.30, when is what time they would get out of bed. And uh, then i come back. Well, you know, since my dad died, I don't go to Starbucks anymore. And this may sound stupid, but I go to Dunkin' Donuts. And I don't stay there. I buy it the night before, put it in the refrigerator, and drink it at the house while I'm studying in the morning. And, and I just find, like, and my mom says, why are you doing that? I said, I don't know, I'm carrying Dad's tradition. <laughs> I do always go to bake it. <laughs> During those five or six years, I did not know my dad was going to die. Now he's gone. I can't do nothing. Time has a way of passing us by. And I want to challenge you today, as fathers, that we got... Warren Miller says in his ski films that I have a lot of them, he does documentary ski films, he says, if you don't go snow skiing, you're one day older when you do, meaning that this next year. But then next year comes, you don't do it again, it's the following year. And, then, and we mean well. We're going to do it one day, just like cats and trail. We're, we're going to do it. But it never happens. It gets away from us. In verse 28 of what I read today, God basically is telling us, don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Period. That's what he's saying. Listen what he says now. Say not unto thy family, go and come again and, uh, and to tomorrow I will give. When thou hast it by thee. In other words, to do it today. Our children want our time and not our money. You can buy them all the presents you want. You know, I worked hard. I bought them this and I bought them that. I happened to have been in garage work during the time when my kids were growing up. I had so many cars that were left with me that each of my kids had a car, their own car, at the age of 16 when they got their license. They were older cars and all, but hey, it was better than nothing. I could give it to them. We fixed it up, got it running, put it on the road. But I have since found out that they really want your time. 
more than any gift you can give them this time. When I watch my granddaughter right now, Caitlin at the house, when she comes up, occasionally she does it to me, she says, Pop, play with me. Boy, <laughs> that's hard to say no. I got to say no sometimes, but, uh, but I'll tell her, come on up. She'll sit on the recliner with me. She sits on the thing there, and, and she'll have a book, and she'll go through the book like she's reading the book and everything. She knows it by heart because it's been read, and she literally can say the words for each page. That I'll, but she wants my time. She wants to play, and when you, when you, she's, if you say you're going to play with her, I watch my like my son will play with her in the other room. She lights up. I mean, she gets excited. It's the greatest gift you can give a child is your time. They want to spend time, and, it, and you know something it doesn't matter what age. Something that I else I find that I don't understand at all, but I've been amazed as I got older. And since my daughter's gotten older, I have noticed in other people's family that daughters have a, want to have a close relationship with their father. Let's put it that way. I'm not saying they all do. But it amazed me. I expected that more from my son than I did from my daughter. You know, and my daughter, I got a kick out of this morning. You know, most people get cards. I get a text message. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. I love you, Dad. I said, that's my daughter. <laughs> Our time makes them feel important. Uh, you look, you took time from your busy schedule to be with them. And believe me, they know it. And I'll tell you one thing, they'll never forget it. It just amazes me how delightful, how happy they are. The moment I sit down to do something. As fathers, we sometimes withhold our uh, blessings in the form of thank you and compliments. While our children are growing up, we have to discipline them. There's no way around it. It's biblical. You're going to hear a verse shortly about that. But you know what? we got to spend as much time encouraging them as we do disciplining them. Making small successes in the big deals. This year, our granddaughter, Haley, oh, my daughter's Haley, H.T., she went from being, uh, what would you say, a little above low average in school to the honor list. She only missed one report card by one point of making it the whole year. She's just been outstanding. And we have been trying to, you know, I always gave them some money for each grade. But she made the honor list. I had to do something way above that. I didn't realize she was going to make it every time. I told my wife, I said, I can't afford this. <laughs> He's breaking us. But, you know, we keep on going because I want her to be so greatly encouraged that she wants to keep doing it. And I told her, I said, I told you you're capable of doing that. Dyslexia people have a high IQ. I've learned that years ago. So they just got to learn how to use it and how to apply it. But we withhold not good from them to whom it is due. And that's our grandkids, our kids, our children. Uh, we can have all these rules in your house. And I got to the point where I realize, you know, you can have too much rules, even if they're good rules. And you got all these rules, and you spend the whole day talking to your kids because they broke the, the rule. And that's not a happy life. Our, our daughter, granddaughter, did something yesterday, which I was going to speak, even had she hadn't did this, but she happened to do it yesterday. I read someplace recently that children, young kids that talk, technically have a little different language. Even though you say it and they understand the word, they don't comprehend the true meaning behind it all the time. And my son's walking up the steps, wants Caitlin to come with him, and she's behind the hassock, hiding and giggling. 
She's playing. He's serious. But she doesn't really comprehend that he's serious. He finally says, you better be at the top of the stairs by the time I get up there. You know what will happen if you don't. And so she gets up. She gets to the bottom of the stairs. She's still giggling and having a wonderful... And, and you can tell, at least I can. I don't know how you feel about it because she was in the same room. It wasn't rebellion. She was playing. And sometimes we don't understand that as parents. And I'll be honest with you, my wife and I have talked about this a lot. I think we're trying to make our kids grow up too quick, including the school system. What they're teaching in elementary school blows my mind today. I, I'm glad that if, if they can, but when they come home with homework more than, than I had when I was in high school, I mean, it just blows me away. I said, I think we're taking the fun out of those kids. They want to play. That's all their five, six-year-old kids want to play. They don't want to be doctors or philosophy. I can't even help them earn their homework. <laughs> As fathers, we sometimes withhold teaching of our children the things of God. You know, it's not mom's responsibility to teach godly things to kids. It's the father's responsibility. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Let me tell you, that is true. I've seen it work too many times. Now, they may go off, and this is kind of what I've seen with kids. They'll, they, while they're with the parents, they're doing a pretty good job. The moment they graduate from high school and start going on their own, bam, another direction. And I don't mean that they're robbing banks or anything else. They're just not following the Lord. Their heart's not there. But i also seen, years later, start coming back. And so I finally realized that training them up in the Lord, this verse does work. It sticks with them. The Holy Spirit's convicted them if they're saved. You know that's happening, even though you may not see it in everyday life. And the next thing you know, you see them back in the church, you see them back in the things. And maybe it's just a part of life of growing up. I don't, I don't have the perfect answer for that because there's some kids that grow up and stick with the Lord and go straight. I, uh, you know, you just got to do the best you can. So they may go down the wrong trail, but they eventually will come back if they've been trained. But the teaching of God will always be with them. And it, that teaching will draw them back. Proverbs 19, 18. Chasti chastine thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. There is going to be times when we need to discipline our children. There's no way around it. But we must also remember that we got to do it in love. We also must understand that they, what they, we have to make sure that they understand why they're being punished. And I tell you, my son does a really good job on that. And uh, uh, because I failed a lot in that category. It's got to be clear to them uh, why they're being punished, what they did wrong. They have to understand. Now, let's face it. You ever notice, I bet you every one of you have noticed this. You've got two kids fighting each other. Aggravated, yelling at each other, maybe pulling their hair, whatever. And you separate them. And five minutes later, they're bud buds. Like nothing ever happened. Why? Because they totally forgot what took place five minutes earlier. Now remember that also when we discipline our kids. And five minutes later they do the same thing over again. They totally forget. Because they're kids. They got, I can't, I don't know, I don't understand it all. Because I don't remember being that young and what went through my mind. But we all did it. And we have to understand that, I think. And it goes back to what I said earlier. We've got to be careful that we have so many rules that we have no fun in the family. Rules are important. 
But there's got to be times where you just got to have to throw the stoop some of the rules away. And, and only talk to them once in a while about it. And not make it an all day thing of rule, 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 rule to where they have a terrible life. You want the life to be fun. You want them to enjoy life. Enjoy. And when they grow up, they say, you know, I really had a good time growing up. I really enjoyed my family life. But it's got to be clear to them. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. And ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath. But bring them up in the nurture and admiration of the Lord. This is so important. Why? Because we can discipline them to the point of anger. Irritation or resentment. There's another one I feel that. At a young father. And uh. And we have to get over that. And we have to have people teach us this. We have to learn it. Don't make so many rules. As I said, that children don't have fun. We are to discipline them, but at the same time, make life enjoyable to where they're having fun while we're disciplining them. Remember, children want to play. And you're not going to take that away from them. Uh, Wayne Scott, a friend of mine, is now a pastor up uh, outside of Indiana, uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. A Pollock. If you ever watch this, Pollock. <laughs> Wayne Zinsky is what I call him. He calls me Glenn Zinsky. But uh, he said, you know, you got to, how does he say it now? You got to break. The will, but not, I don't know, how does he say, do you remember how he says that? Uh, you got to kind of break the stubbornness, but you don't want to break the will of the child in the discipline. He had a way of saying it. I forgot the words he used, but it was really nice the way he said it. It made you realize that you can punish to the point to where you can break the total will of a child, which is devastating. You got to be careful that we take care of the discipline, but not to the point to where we break the will of the child, the where the, the will they don't want to accomplish anything in their life. I never. How many times have you seen a movie, or maybe you know somebody personally? I can never do anything right for my mom or my dad. That's devastating. They want to have fun. They want to enjoy life. Don't take that away from him. Remember, withhold not good from our families to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thy hand to do it. Say not to thy families, Go and come again tomorrow, and I will give when thou hast it to give to them, to, to them today. Take time and make time for your families. Time stands still for no man. If you don't do it today, you're going to be one day later when you get to do it, if you do it the next day. You have all the good intentions in the world, but unless you do something about it, it's never going to happen. Encourage your family, compliment them often, and above all, teach them the things of God. The younger a child learns the love of God and the salvation that they can have, the more they will reap the benefits God has for them later in life. How many people learn lessons too late in life and wish, oh man, look all the years I've wasted. I hope and trust that I've been some encouragement to you today. As fathers, it applies to moms too, especially to us dads. Let's pray. We pray that we have been a blessing to you. For further assistance, call us at 864-270-1472 anytime. Send email to info at stlmm.org or visit our website at www.stlmm.org. Like any ministry, it costs money to operate. Please consider supporting this ministry as God leads you with your prayers and your financial gifts by going to www.stlmm.org and clicking on Donations.